Uh, we all know and love James and Genevieve, and we're grateful to God for the way the Lord has used them. Uh, James served with me here in this church for about 10 years, directing our mission work, traveling around the world, taking people with him everywhere. My son Matt and, uh, was working with that, and then James. and um, James traveled, uh, I don't know, China, Siberia. Spent, a, spent three, three months in, in Russia and Siberia with a mission team. Uh, South America, I, don't, I guess all over the world. Uh, conducted a crusade in the Philippines. And we had an open door in England. And I said to my wife, I'm going to ask James to go take care of that. The Evans were there for a while getting things going before we could get everything else in place, and they did a magnificent job. And Evelyn said to me, you can't send him. You know, you just, you just think that through now because he's done so much to help us here, he and Genevieve. And I said, well, if we want it done there, we've got to send someone that I believe can get it done. And I'm grateful to God for what the Lord has done through them. I want him not, he's not going to preach now. We're going to have him preach on Tuesday evening. And uh, then we're going to receive an offering for the work in England. And we really need to receive a great offering. You determine you're going to give a very generous gift just for that work in England. They've just moved into a new location. I wish we've had some great open doors. I, I can't tell all about it, but I want him to come and just talk about the work there, and then we'll have him preach on Tuesday. But James, come along. God bless you. Thank you. Well, please take the Word of God and go with me in the New Testament to the book of Acts and chapter 14, and we'll take our text from this passage this morning. As we're turning there, I Remember, as Rodney Ruppel came up to pray, I was 14 years old. I think he was 16 years old. And we were uh, out in the woods on Vienna Road in Clio, Michigan. And I was a staunch Pentecostal. And Rodney was an independent Baptist. I don't think he'd been an independent Baptist for very long. But he was telling me about how he believed God called him to be a preacher. And uh, he had began to convince me that I should uh, become a Baptist and a uh, what a, an amazing journey God has led me on, and I'm so grateful. Uh, God led me here to this place where I learned what being a Bible-believing Christian is all about, and God has helped me in so many ways, and so many people have influenced me. I'm so grateful, of course, for Pastor and Mrs. Sexton and their influence, their great influence on my life, and all of you who have had such a great impact on my life. Let's read our text in Acts chapter 14, beginning in verse 25. Paul is on his first missionary journey, and as he returns and concludes his first missionary journey, the Bible records for us in verse 25, And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Italia, and then sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles." Well, I'd like to do just that this morning. I would like to, as we see in verse 27, rehearse all that God has done with us and all for God's glory. God is doing an amazing work in England and He's doing a great work all around this world. But I'm thrilled just to have a small part of it. Near Trafalgar Square in London, there is the National Portrait Gallery for England. And some of the most amazing paintings in the world are found there. The masters had painted some things. And you can go in there and look at such beautiful paintings. Some are three and four hundred years old, but they're so detailed they look like they were taken with a high-definition camera. And everything is so perfect. The interesting thing is that when you go in there and view those portraits, no one ever stops in the National Portrait Gallery and says to the curators and the people who are helping there, what type of paintbrushes did the masters use? What brand were those paintbrushes? How were those paintbrushes made? No one ever asks about the paintbrushes because the paintbrushes aren't what is significant. Well, what is significant are the beautiful pictures the masters painted and they just used simple things like sticks of wood and pieces of hair. And you and I are like those paintbrushes. And in the hand of a master, he can do a beautiful thing in a place where you imagine there's only darkness and only difficulty and he can paint a beautiful portrait, and God's grace is amazing, and it's a wonderful thing to be a part of what God is doing. I'd like to share with you just a few of these things, and uh, trust that the Lord will bless you. I want to say that 
You have been such a help. We could not do what we're doing without you, our sending church. For over 15 years now, Temple Baptist Church has been praying that God would open a door in England and Pastor Sexton had the burden. And uh, all together, uh, we believed that God was going to open a door and he did. And what an exciting thing to see the beginning five years ago. Five years ago, we went, my wife and I went to the United Kingdom and our first thoughts were that England is a place where people like John Wesley and George Whitfield and Charles Spurgeon and William Carey and all those heroes you think of are well-revered and honored and their heritage is kept and people there in England know so much and respect them so much and England is filled with genteel people who drink hot tea out of cups and saucers and have their little finger out and are always very, very kind and genteel. Well, we were in for a shock. We got to England and there are some very kind and very wonderful people there and some some of the most sincere and uh, truly wonderful Christians you'll ever meet on this planet. But England is in the middle of a battle, a cultural battle. England is in many ways the leading culture in this world and in the United Kingdom there are so many things that are dark and difficult and the Christians there will tell you that they've been in a battle for over 30 years And it seems like it is almost hopeless. The reality of the battle is secularism and postmodernism have taken over. There is a group now in England called the Evangelical Atheists. They have millions of pounds. They put up billboards and on the public buses that almost everyone at some time rides on. There are large billboards that say this. I've written down some of their quotes. Relax. Enjoy your life. There is no hell because there is no God. Evangelical atheists. And these are people who are in many ways taking over in universities and schools. And most of the people that you speak to say, well, I'm not at all interested in God. There's a great apathy there in the United Kingdom. The UK tax code punishes married couples more punitively than any other Western country. You're penalized if you live together as a man and a wife in a home. UK 16-year-olds drink more alcohol and consume more drugs than any other 16-year-olds in the world on average. And it's a very, very dark place where the gospel once was preached around the world from and where there was great light and great missionary efforts. But today, less than 4% of the people in England attend any type of church service or any type of religious service ever on a regular basis. Less than 4%. And just around 1% of people in England would consider themselves to be evangelical Christians. It is a very dark battleground. It's a place where there is so much uh, of a battle against God and His people. Out of 10 couples that live together, nine of those couples are not married. The institution of marriage is almost unheard of. We have a young lady that comes to our church and in our Sunday school class, she was telling us, that in her class at school of around 70 students, she is the only student who has a mother and father that are married. She's made fun of because she has a mother and father that are married. And the institution of marriage is something that is so very much unheard of there. Teens have no idea that having a child out of wedlock is ever or has ever been considered wrong. It's something that's very normal to them. We are on the front lines of a cultural war for the souls of men. Not only secularism and postmodernism, but Islam is on the rise. But I want you to understand something. Some of the most beautiful paintings in the National Portrait Gallery started off with very dark canvases, black clouds, inky backgrounds, and the light that was put on them by the master in that paintbrush. What an amazing, beautiful picture. That's what God is doing in England today. And He enjoys doing things that people think are impossible. When we first arrived at Beaches Road Baptist Chapel, it was a beautiful place. It would seat hundreds of people, but no one was there. It was totally empty. It had been closed down for well over a year. And someone came to one of the first services in one of the first few months. And I was so excited. I spoke to them, and they told me something that was not very encouraging. They said, what you're doing cannot be done. They gave me a list of several people who were missionaries who had come and gone and tried what we had tried and it never worked and it never would work. But God just enjoys proving himself when people think it can't be done. There's a lady who cleaned Beaches Road Baptist Chapel as it sat empty for five years. 
She's a Christian lady who attended another church just a little way up the road. And she and her family would come every week and vacuum the carpets and clean the windows and dust the pews. Even though there was no hope of it ever happening, she just thought, this is something I can do for the Lord and hope something will happen here. She's the quietest, most unassuming person you'd ever meet. But she began coming. She's a member at another good Bible-believing Baptist church just up the road. But she began coming to our services, and she came very regularly. And last Tuesday evening, we had a praise service. And her son, who is now our Sunday school superintendent, stood up and he said, When I was a child, I'd come, and my mother and I would clean this building every week. And I'd think, what a waste. Why don't we just tear this down? Why don't we just sell it and make something out of it? And I never understood, but my mother just came week after week after week trusting something would happen. And now we had, oh, well over 100 people on Sunday morning at our service. And that lady who came, comes to every service, was able to find a person, lead that person to Christ. And that other lady who's now newly been saved is going to be baptized next month. And you think, God is doing an amazing thing in a dark place where people think it cannot be done. God is working, and it's an amazing thing to see. The average church, like our church, a Bible-believing Baptist church in England, would have an average attendance of between 8 to 12 people. And you think, that's a difficult thing. But when you imagine that only 1% of people in England consider themselves to even be evangelical Christians, you think, it's, it's an interesting statistic, isn't it? But I want you to know that God is at work and I want to give you, instead of just all the dark background of the canvas, I want to paint some light and, and say God is doing something great and we are rejoicing and there are some miraculous things that are happening and I'm so excited to be here and give you a report about what God is using you as a church to do in England. I'm just an extension of the pastor. I'm just an extension of you. And God has sent me and my wife from here to there to see what God will do. And as you pray... I'm wanting you to know what God is doing. Crown College moved from its former location near Evesham an hour up the road, and we're only now about 10 or 15 minutes from Beaches Road Baptist Chapel. We have a campus that's bigger and better. It's larger and can accommodate more people, and it's a very, very nice property that God miraculously provided, and we're so thankful for that. What God is doing at Beaches Road, the Sunday school is growing. We started with one. We grew to two. We grew then to zero, and... Uh, we grew again. God is blessing. Just a few weeks ago, we had 75 children in Sunday school. That wasn't a big day. That was just a, a regular day when 75 children came. And you say, well, there are some, our, our Sunday school at Temple Baptist is much larger than that. And I'm sure you're right. But it's an amazing thing to see that from nothing, God is doing some great things. And these children in the Sunday school are excited. They're learning so many things. They're coming to know Christ as their Savior. And we're outgrowing our Sunday school facility. We have people meeting in the, in the side porch entrance. We have young boys meeting there. We have people meeting in the kitchen. We set up a table and chairs, and, and we have boys that meet in there. We have children everywhere, and we're growing out of our space, and God's at work, and we're thankful for it. We were praying that God would provide a, a place for us because we had run out of room. There was a house right next door to the church, a, a very nice home, and it had, we had asked the owner if he would ever be willing to sell it to let us know. And so before we knew it, about two years ago, another person bought it. We were very disappointed, and we thought, well, we'll never see that again. A developer bought it. They gutted it, put everything new they could, a new heating system, new plumbing, new electrical system, everything imaginable, brand-new kitchen, all-new carpet, brand-new plaster, brand-new appliances. Everything was brand-new, and they doubled the price of what the original owner had asked. It sat for all of 2008 and all of 2009, and no one ever came to even look at the house. We received a phone call in December of 2009, and a, a person said, we enjoy what you're doing, we think what you're doing at Beaches Road is a good thing, and we have purchased the house, and we were wondering, would your church be interested in renting it? I said to them, I'm, I know at this point our church would not be able to afford that. Two weeks later, they spoke to me again. They said, I don't think you understood what we meant initially. We bought the house so you could use it. So if you'll just tell us how much you can pay every month on rent, we want you to use that house. And we've done this. We've got a 15-year note on that house, and whatever you pay us over and above the interest payment, that will go toward the principal, and we want you to purchase that house. And we've purchased it. You just pay us back as you can, and you can rent to own that home. The home is eight feet from Beaches Road Baptist Chapel. 
We use it for the nursery. We use it uh, for a Bible class. We have our teenage Sunday school class in there, and we're growing now, and we have a place to put those. We use it for a ladies' coffee morning. We use it for some of our workers to live in. It's an amazing thing, and it's a miracle. No one could have ever imagined that would happen, but God is doing miraculous things there. We were praying that God would provide a vehicle, and our faith was small because God has provided 10 vehicles. People have called us up and said, we heard you bring children to Sunday school. We have a 12-passenger minibus. Would you be able to use that? We said, yes. Someone said, we heard you needed a bus for the college students and for the church. We have a 17-seat minibus we've found on the Internet. We've purchased it. It's coming your way. And if you'll meet it, it'll be at your church parking lot in two hours. We had nothing to do with that. Vehicles come in. Derek and Juliana were given a a beautiful minivan and, again, a nice station wagon to pick up people free of charge. So many things have happened. Ten vehicles and a motorcycle. (laughs) A man came to church named Lyndon. He came for a year. He got saved. He was so excited about it. Last Christmas, you may have heard a knock came at the door just a few days after Christmas. And I went to the door and a man said, would you please come here? I have a, a delayed Christmas gift to give you. I walked out, there's a large truck, and inside the truck there was a brand new BMW motorcycle. And he said, "Uh, this is a Christmas gift. And I said, I'm sorry, you must have the wrong address. He said, is your name James? I said, yes. Is this the Marsh Farmhouse? I said, yes. But you must have the wrong address. I don't know anybody that would buy me a brand new BMW motorcycle. And he said, do you know a man named Lyndon? I said, yes. He said, this is from Lyndon. So I rang Lyndon and I said, Lyndon, is this a joke? You don't want your family to know you bought a brand new motorcycle for Christmas, so you supposedly sent it over here. And is this a joke? And he said something very interesting. He said, No, the, the greatest thing that ever happened in my life was when I came to your church and got saved. And I just wanted to say thank you. And I'm glad he did. <laughs> it's great. What an amazing thing. And you think, God is at work. These are things that are miraculous. They're out of the ordinary. They're things I could have never imagined. But God has done amazing things. We want to thank Him for it. Our youth rally, we have at least 50 young people, teenage people. Some of them are on parole. Some of them just got out of jail. Some of them uh, try to sell drugs out in front of the church. We say, no, no, you can't sell drugs out in front of the church. Go, Go down the block and sell drugs. Don't do it right here in front of the church. And they come in the church and they sit and listen to the gospel preached. The pure gospel preached for 45 minutes and they're absolutely silent and they're absolutely respectful and they're getting saved and God's changing their lives and they're coming to church and growing in Christ. It's amazing to see. And these are the people that no one can reach. The police said, we don't know how you do it. We don't know what you're doing. Tell us what you're doing. We said, we don't know what we're doing. We just pray and God does it. And God is doing amazing things with our teen youth rally on Saturday nights. It's amazing to see. Camp Victory, we had our first camp It's hard to find a camp where there is great Bible preaching and there are some standards of holiness and things like that. It's very difficult to find a camp that uses the King James Version. And so this past summer, we said we're going to have our first camp, Camp Victory. And we had it. We thought, where will we have it? We found a a man who had joined our church, used to work at a place that was a beautiful sports facility. 500 acres, lakes, ponds, a zip line, rock climbing walls, archery, shooting galleries. Everything imaginable, a zip line, uh, speed boats, sailboats, kayaking, canoeing, everything you could imagine. And I went to meet with a man and he said, my wife and I are Christians. And Ten years ago we bought this camp and we've put all of our life savings into it. And what our dream would have been someday is to have a group of young people come and hear the gospel and get saved. And we've liked, we would love to have that happen. We said, well, we don't have any budget. We're just praying. We don't, we don't have any, any money to, to really give. And he said, well, what if we did this? What if we charged two pounds and 50 pence per camper per day? And they could do all the activities they want. That's about a $5 a day. And I said, I think that will work. And God blessed in such an amazing way. We had an amazing camp. We had many people come to know Christ as their Savior. Three young men surrendered to preach the gospel. That's almost unheard of Amen. where we're at. It's an amazing thing that God is doing. And Camp Victory, next year, God willing, will have a junior camp the second week of August and a a teen camp the third week of August. And we're going to see what God will do. And he's blessing in phenomenal ways. Islam is on the rise. I must hurry. We have to talk about Oxford and Brighton as well. But in Blackheath, on Beaches Row, there are so many Islamic people, Sikhs, Hindus, Buddhists, so many people like that. 
Four out of ten is Islamic people in the UK believe that it should be legal and it is moral to kill anyone who would convert from Islam to Christianity in the UK. They believe it should be legalized. There are more mosques being built than there are churches being built in England today. I went to open the front doors of the church on a Sunday morning, and there I saw just out on the front sidewalk, just in front of Beaches Road, in the chapel there, 30 or more Muslim men. They had white robes on and white hats, and they had their prayer rugs. They put their prayer rugs down on the floor on the, on the sidewalk, and they knelt down to pray. And they were praying about our chapel. That was a week of prayer for the Islamic people, and they were specifically praying that Christian churches would close. And they got down and they began to cry out to Allah and the the Prophet Muhammad. And I was there opening the doors and getting all the hymn books and bulletins straightened, and I suddenly felt all by myself. Thirty Islamic people praying against our church, praying against me as the pastor, praying against our people. And I thought... What am I going to do? I went down into the chapel and got on my knees and started praying. As I began to pray, I remembered something. I remembered there are way far, far more than 30 people back at Temple Baptist Church that are praying for me. There are far more than 30 people praying on a rug, on a path to a false god that are praying for me. There are hundreds of people back at my home church, back at Temple Baptist Church, that pray for me every day and pray for this work every week. And they pray to the real, true, living God who is able to do all things. And I went back and I opened the doors back up and I waved at Him and smiled at Him and I knew in my heart, God is going to answer prayer. Less than a month later, one of the Islamic centers in Birmingham, England opened their doors to an English class and the city of Birmingham Council just so happened to select us to be the people who taught English classes in that Islamic center. And now every week we teach the gospel to between 60 and 90 Islamic people. Every week, God answers prayer. We're in a battle, but God gives the victory. And I want you to know your prayers count. Your prayers matter. Please keep praying. God is doing amazing things. We offer English classes, nine English classes now. The government made a rule. We we had a hard time finding people to come to the English classes. But the government just passed a law that if you're going to have any citizenship in the UK, you have to have an English proficiency. Suddenly, all, of, all kinds of immigrants started to come and take English classes. But we ran into another problem. We said, how will we teach them? We'd have to teach them with the official government uh, curriculum, and it would cost about $150 per person. And we weren't able to do something like that. And so one of our workers called Cambridge University Press that published the official government English curriculum. They called them up and said, we're, we're looking for it. And the people at Cambridge University Press said, this is an interesting thing that just happened. We've just spent months putting all that curriculum online and all of our books we're not using anymore. We were, in fact, just going to throw them away this week. Would you mind if we sent you all of our books, all of the official British curriculum for English classes? And by the way, if, if we could pay the shipping, we'll be happy to do that. Box after box after box after box of official curriculum came and was put in Beaches Road Baptist Chapel. And we teach the official government regulated curriculum now to Islamic people, to Sikhs, to Hindus, to Buddhists, to atheists. And God is working in a great way. Last Sunday morning, we had five Islamic people come to our Sunday morning service. Hundreds of people are being given the gospel all the time through this work. What is God doing in Oxford? Well, very quickly, let me say... This is a place that many people thought to be impossible. A fresher's fair. All the new students come in and 10,000 new students and former students attend. And we were asking, is it possible to get in there to tell what is happening at Oxford Baptist Chapel? And they said, absolutely not. Churches are not allowed. But Derek Moreland didn't know churches weren't allowed before he applied. And it just so happened that they approved the application the only church in Oxford that's ever had an opportunity to be at the Freshers' Fair. 10,000 students passed by. Hundreds of contacts were made. All of the students had to pass by their booth on the way into this entire fair. And you think of that. God is at work. Uh, Wycliffe College is a historical college, a part of Oxford University. And at Wycliffe College, uh, they were trying to start a Bible study every week. And the people said, no, it can't be done. You're an outside group. You have to have a student who will sponsor that. And that was on Friday. On Saturday, a lady walked by who was a new student from California, just arrived. And she was standing outside of Oxford Baptist Chapel. And Kathy Henshin went out and met her and said, 
can we help you with anything? She said, yes, I'm looking for a good church to attend. I'm from California. I've never been to Oxford. And can I come tomorrow? She came on Sunday morning and she said, I go to Wycliffe College and I'd love to have a Bible study every week. Do you know of anyone who could help us with that? And so every week now there's a Bible study at Wycliffe College at Oxford University. Imagine that. God is at work. There was a gypsy man that was saved out of a very difficult background. He and his, uh, another lady were, were baptized just last week at Oxford Baptist Chapel. There was a pastor at the, at the service who had preached in that chapel over, for over the, the last 50 years. He had preached from time to time. And he told me this. He said, I've preached here off and on for over the last 50 years before the building closed. And he said, I'd never seen the building full in my life. There were over 115 people at the baptism standing out in the road on the sidewalk trying to peek over the, the doors to try to see in. And he said, you know, you've been praying for revival. And this touched me. The, the man said, you've been praying for revival. I heard you pray for revival today. But he said, you don't understand. For us, this is revival. This is something we've never seen. I've, I've been preaching over 50 years. I've never seen anything like this. God is at work. Brighton is a wonderful place. It's a beautiful city. We were given the use of a beautiful chapel there that would seat hundreds of people. The Sunday school rooms are large. God willing, we're going to start a weekly Bible club there and have evangelistic Sunday schools and start with some English classes and God willing, begin a full-fledged church there in the coming months. You pray for us. It's a city much like San Francisco, known for its sin. But where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. I was a bit disappointed because I was so excited about Brighton. We were told Beaches Road would be impossible. We were told Oxford would be impossible. But everyone seemed very happy about Brighton. I thought something must be wrong until I got a call from a man from another part of the United Kingdom that told me, brother, you can't go to Brighton. It's too wicked. It's too much sin there. It will be, and then he said my favorite words, impossible. And I thought, well... This is God's stamp of approval. If it's impossible, it's something God must desire to prove himself in. And I want you to know that we'll go back to England, but I want to ask you to hold the ropes and pray. I depend, we depend, all 15 people from here who are there depend every day on you to pray and give and believe that God will do great things and the best is yet to be. We're trusting God for miracles in England. Thank you.